Hi everyone, in this lecture today we are going to talk about, talk about a concept of encapsulation. And I'm now going to walk you through an example at of the network how a message is sent network from the source to it. And you can already understand so the network let's consider complex and the many source pieces. here. It wants to send a message to them to this destination. Message is the technical terminology used for protocols, there's hardware and software and information. And so the natural question is, how can so once a source creates an application or a message, what happens to it? Is there any hope of organizing it onto the transport Organizing the structure of the there Net is an additional answer header information is added, which is yes, which and that's why we are studying this course. And, and the answer to uh, this transport question is layer message is actually called a So let's look at an example here. It then moves one so layer think below of air to the travel. network Air travel layer, is where additional complex. headers are added, and, the, and, it's, a and it's called a, it's a datagram. It's a complex task. And the way the datagram happens, it then it's passes easy the network because it's organized in layers. layers. So Once let's again, additional headers are added. Actually. A net purchase a link for a message. Uh, then you, called, then when you reach the airport, from this you check in your bags, from the source, and then and now the, the, links, the <laughs> packets are going to be put onto the physical and then link, connecting the, the source. The, the flight switch. takes off on the runway, and so the this packet is going to move all the way through the switch. So let's say you're going to from say, now uh, at the United motor, States to Europe, so it takes it's the battery is first, the, outing, the packet is going then to go once to the link layer, the, uh, one of the headers as the you see has taken place, and then the packet arrives at your destination. So what happens network is layer. you first land once on it has moved onto the network. Notice the analogy. It's analogy again going to the, the uh, <coughs> runway takeoff. Then runway land. link layer header once, is once the again plane has landed. landed. So it's going to be the, the, the passenger this protocol stack, stack, and then, and then you go to the baggage plane and stack, hopefully your baggage is right. Then, and then reach the destination. Uh -huh. And if the baggage is right, you go home. Each of these Otherwise, headers are going to go strip complain as it as the so these are this it's nothing but a series of steps up uh, it's organized in a series stack. of steps. And once and this is what makes the destination uh, travel message M is left. So e easy. So the important our thing to know here is, is that our uh, our internet is that headers are added also as a, organized uh, as a I should say through the different, different layers structures of the also organized stack. in a bunch of layers. And at the we'll source, and they're so removed. Think about the uh, this at analogy and the distribution or even the layer even in an intermediate layer protocol of when the packet moves networks. up the protocol stack. Okay, so another important thing to note here what are the different that layers that only in the end in the airline have all the first as you saw is implemented. For you have the ticket purchase, then you have baggage check, gates, all the five starting from the application, all the way and airplane routing. We will see the, as we move the, along at the course, course, the airplane routing takes place at uh, routers while you are flying. Uh, and once you are, arrive uh, at the airport, within there are again the same only five steps. Has three layers so that are the important thing to note, the note here is that each layer they do not have a and transport and an the service provided by one layer the switch is independent. On it's kind of layer independent of and they do not have the network provided layer independent. For example, so the, when you so are per, thing purchasing your ticket, host, you have not all the five layers what implemented in how the take while is going to take off from uh, the runway. In fact, we are not even other worrying devices about such how which is and check routers in package. only have uh, and two and so three layers. So and so three this layers kind of layering them. helps respectively. Helps to divide the certain tasks up. And what they also uh, help in is that you can change some of the functionality of one layer without changing the functionality of the other layer. For example, you purchase the ticket. Now, at the moment when you purchase the ticket, the per, a particular airport might be doing baggage checks in a particular way. But by the time you, <clears throat> the time say after three months when you're actually flying, the baggage checking one might be done in a separate way. So these layers are independent and the functioning of one layer is, is kind of, <clears throat> it does not influence the functioning of the other layer. The only thing is that there is a dependence. Only once you have purchased the ticket can you go to the next stage of checking in baggage. Without purchasing a ticket, you cannot check in the baggage. And only after you purchase the baggage can you go to the gates. So going to the gates and loading and, and sitting on the aircraft requires you to have done the previous two steps that you purchased the tickets and you have checked in your bags. Okay, so this concept of layering is very powerful and it helps in dealing with complex systems. It's, it, it helps us analyze complex systems by baking, breaking the complex systems, system into simpler tasks. And, and this is a concept that's not only used in networking but in a lot of other fields as well. Modularization, as it's called in some other fields, is, helps uh, in maintenance and updating of the system. And as I mentioned earlier, the changes in one layer can be done without infecting the other layer. But then you might, there are some uh, issues with layering as well, and we'll not get into that 
uh, in a lot of detail in our lecture, the only one of the major things is there's a loss of flexibility. There's a loss of flexibility. It's both good and bad, but loss of flexibility is one of the issues with layering. Okay, so what are the layers <coughs> of networking or the internet protocol stack to be, to be precise? There are five layers. The first layer is called the application layer. The second as the transport. The next, the network. The follow <coughs> the network is a link and then there is a physical layer. And here I'm taking a top-down approach. So the layer on top is the application layer. Follow, <coughs> and the layer at the very bottom is the physical layer. Now, what does the application do? The application layer supports different kinds of network applications. And some of the app network applications that we will study in the next chapter is our FTP, SMTP, and HTTP. And then what's the goal of the transport layer? The goal of the transport layer is to, is to, data, is to transfer data between processes. And then the network layer is, takes care of forwarding this kind of data and routing the data from the, uh, from the source to the destination. The data link layer actually takes, uh, <coughs> takes care of transferring data between a neighboring elements of a network. And the physical link is actually the bits, the physical bits onto the wire. So we'll get into each of these layers in much greater detail. So if you're, if you're a little confused and you do not understand all this, uh, understand the functionality of each of these layers, do not panic. We'll get into each of these layers in greater detail later. Now, the only the one thing that you want to remember is the TCP IP layer or the internet protocol stack has only five layers but the OSI reference model which was the first model that was proposed for this layering has two additional layers called the presentation and the session layers. The important thing to note is, is that this OSI model there are seven layers the five that I showed in the previous slide and the presentation and the session but the internet stack misses these layers. So the internet protocol stack does not have presentation and session. So we are not going to study presentation and session in this uh, in this course. We are only going to study the five layers of the internet protocol stack that are app tr application, transport, network, link, and physical. Okay, so in the, <coughs> in the next lecture, in the next week when we move on, what we will do is we will start, we will look into application layer and uh, and study some of of these protocols like ftp http and smtp thank you and with that i'll end this lecture